It's 23 minutes after 7. Uh, today we're talking about a subject that uh, really you don't think about the fact that you need to go through it because it's something that when you get into a relationship, you're not thinking about a breakup. So you probably are not thinking about how to arm yourself, how to deal with it when it happens because you don't want it to happen uh, unless you really don't like the person that you are with. But this is a conversation, it's a must-have conversation because you know that sometimes this also leads to people taking their own lives because they feel it's not worth living any longer because the person that they thought loved them uh, apparently does not. So we're talking about this subject and we hope that we will all open ourselves up to learning a few new things here on the show. And I like Coach Amos Kevin and Anis join us. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mama. Hey. Welcome from Kumasi. Thank you. I hope uh, you had a good time. Oh, of course, yeah. it was a touching situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope you have gotten over the shock. No, I, I couldn't get over it. And I don't want to get over it uh, because it's, this project it's not must be completed. just a show. Yeah. And it's, it's a project their lives. So I've decided not to get over it mm. so that I can always be passionate about the project until it's completed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe behind the scenes we'll talk to yeah. more. <laughs> you yeah, must definitely we, get we, over the shock. And then we, the others will become the campaign. Yeah. Uh, we met very amazing people, by the way. Yeah, I was. From Fanaki School was, of Very Nice Doctors and I Workers. Was, I was impressed at the level of honesty. Yeah. You know, where people were not politicizing the issue, but were looking at a situation that needs in immediate intervention mm. and I'm hearing some good news coming out of yeah. um, what you have done and yes. kudos to the team yourselves and those at the Joy FM. Yeah. Uh, did, we're we're grateful did, that Seth Kwame Boate who had gone to Confano yes, to do another Seth. story by the way. I mean, this was just something he chanced on mm, and mm. he decided to tell This tells story. you that issues relating concerning and relating to people um, are very important. Mm. Um, it's not always the political conversation, yeah. but life and death situations. I mean, to think of a mother pass by to use a restroom to see children who are dead. Yeah. That's sight. I mean, yeah. and having in mind that your child is next door, um, that can be harrowing, I yeah. tell you. Uh, I think that but they are doing the, such a the, great job under these constraints, yeah. we must admit also. I, I was really impressed with the doctor, Flangeru. Yeah. I mean, the woman was just on point. And such individuals are rare in our system. And we need to encourage these persons uh, working under so much constraints. Mm. And the team in the mother and baby unit, we, we, we celebrate them. And we hope that they will give off even more. Yeah than, I mean, we expect of them. Mm. Okay. We'll join the crusade anyway. Yeah. We, we are going oh, to. thank you I'm so much. I'm joining it. Uh, thank you. You're uh, welcome. I'm thank you. I'm today. Yesterday, we went to see the first, first and lady. second lady. Yes, and the reception was amazing. Yeah, I had her voice being played this morning. Mm. I think, uh, I know she, our first and second ladies in the past have all been passionate mm. about issues of women and children. Yeah. Um, let's encourage them. Uh, to also pull as much strings as they can yeah. because they have the power, the cloud, yeah. to commandeer resources yeah. within a short space of time. <laughs> Please do all you can because our mothers and children, they need you and everybody must be on there. Yeah. Mm. All right, we'll talk some more, Confanoche, because uh, we've got the videos to show you as we presented the, mm. the CDs. And it was refreshing to know that the second lady, Samira Baumia, actually watched on television as we were doing the program in Kumasi. Oh. So she had certainly been following. And the first lady, uh, Mrs. Rebecca Kofu, had also watched a bit of it, which mm. was really good. Yeah, so so we will show you all those uh, videos mm. later on here on the show. But let's talk about breakups. Mm. Uh, has it happened to you before? No, I mean, my wife is the one I dated and the one I've lived with. Mm. Uh, having okay. been through breakup situations. But you see, when we were children, you may strike an acquaintance with individuals, but it wasn't a relationship. And so it's easy then to move on, yeah. even when those persons get extremely attached to other parties. Um, so that's the extent to which I can go. But usually, as counselors, our experiences 
do not come into the frail. Yeah. That is put at the back then. It's not about you, it's about the person in front of you. I don't know, I remember developing uh, like a certain attitude. Mm. So if you want to move on, yes, yeah, none of my business. But that's not always good, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> for as long as you have developed the coping skills mm. for the new phase, because these are transitions in life, essentially. Uh, you move from one phase of life to a new phase. And nobody ever anticipates a breakup. Seldomly would people prepare even for a breakup. Mm. Unless, of course, they've had a certain experience. So whilst they're coming into a relationship, they contemplate the prospects or the possibility of a breakup and therefore put in place the necessary interventions to be able to um, manage that phase of life. So nobody actually anticipates a breakup until it comes. Mm. Um, a few others, when they go through prenuptial counseling, for instance, they discuss the issues of the things that potentially can lead to a breakup of a marital union. But those in the prenuptials, usually they don't discuss that because mm -hmm. they dread it. It's almost like a scarecrow. So yeah. you don't want to touch it. You just want things to be and not precipitate or trigger it's anything. It's almost as if if you talked about it, then it would lead I to mean, it. It's happening. like death and dying. Who wants to discuss death and dying? Because are you, are you ready to die or you, <laughs> you're going to experience death? But the reality is that each one of us one day will say bye-bye to those earth and start a new transition um, in a world where our forebears have already taken the lead. So a breakup can be devastating for people. For others, they may have anticipated it coming, mm. so they may have put in place the necessary emotional, psychological, and even social interventions to let them um, manage the process smoothly. Others, not. And it depends also very much on your personality type. Some personality types cannot take a breakup at all, especially those who are relational in nature. Mm. That those who are more driven by activity and projects. So they will not necessarily be offended or extremely hurt when it is they lose a relationship. And they can let it be because they think that um, that won't be the end of life. But here you have a scenario where an individual goes into a relationship and says to themselves, he's the only one meant for me, or mm. she's the only one meant for me. Those with those mindsets and paradigms are the ones who usually struggle to get over it. Mm. Because for all they know and care, you are the only one meant for them. So if you're the only one meant for them, then there's no need to try any option again. There will be no alternative. There will be no other person who can replace you. So you are, you are nearly irreplaceable in their life. So is it that, say that to yourself, but don't mean it to the extent that if there's a breakup, you can get over it? You see, you, you should say it to yourself, but you should be honest with yourself. You see, it's one thing, um, there's a song, I've forgotten the, um, the title, but I watch um, an UFO sing that song and then... Um, a strange object from sky crashed it to death. She, it goes like, then I thought I could not survive. And now I can see I can survive. Mm. I can be without you. Then all of a sudden, an asteroid just dropped on this uh, UFO image. I, I saw it uh, on mm. one of the okay. uh, WhatsApp uh, videos. Then she thought she could survive. It was a lady. It's an, a one-eyed um, UFO character that they use for that. Mm. And you see, the thing is this, that an individual will say, I will survive. But are you sure you can survive? You should do an honest appraisal of your situation. And you cannot live in a state of denial, because that's the worst thing you can do to yourself. It is also better to lose a prenuptial relationship than to go into a marital union and be unhappy. Okay, so for instance, there's abuse in there. You should tell yourself it's better to be in a safe relationship than to be in an abusive one. And so to that extent, losing that individual won't be as harrowing as one who has promised you heaven mm. 
and had created an impression which was false, and you have given your all to this individual, your whole heart, mind, body, spirit, everything is in, intertwined with their lives, mm. only to realize that it was a falsity. Hmm. You know, that can be harsh. Because nobody deserves that kind of lifestyle. Nobody deserves these things being extended to them. So where it is that an individual, then if you go through this, then you, you get bitter. You get angry. Some get depressive. And so they go into this extreme state of mournful condition where constantly they, they, they are in a state of melancholy. Their moods are not anything lively. They are not going to inspire confidence in anybody. Now, when it happened that way, and they don't have the right people around them, and friends become people who look at these individuals and reproach them, then it becomes even a worse nightmare. So you can speak to yourself, do the self-talk, but be honest also with your true feelings about okay. this person. And then when you do, how do you get the shock absorbers? Well, the shock absorbers usually, um, you could have an internal shock absorbers that you yourself have built in. There are three things that will keep all of us, apart from our career and friends and all that. Faith, hope, love. These three things are very important for anybody going through a state of breakup. Faith is not so much about spiritual activities, but somebody you can trust in. How you develop trust in others. Mm -hmm. People you can confide in. You need an outlet that offers you a shoulder to lean on. That's a shock absorber you can get. And if you don't have such a person or such a setting or context around you where you can be your natural you mm -hmm. without anybody second guessing and making fun of you, then you're on track. Now, hope is when you know that this is the, not the end of life. It's a transition that may have been turbulent. Admit the turbulence. Admit where you may have contributed. Admit that you have lost. Some create a certain um, impression that, well, I haven't lost much. When you know that even time spent with the individual is a great loss. Mm. Not to talk about the other things that go with relationships of today and so you should have a sense of hope that you can move on and life can be better than today and and this won't be the terminating point for your life mm. then the third one is love love for yourself mm. it's so important that you develop a resilient receptacle called love for you you should learn to appreciate you you should learn to accept you you should learn to validate you. Because see, you may love you, but you may disparage yourself, beating yourself into pulp. And that you don't deserve that. In such a situation where one who promised to love you, promised to give you heaven, only to deliver this hellish condition for you, the best gift you can give to yourself is that assurance that you love you. It may sound selfish, but that's the best gift. Because you may not get the opportunity for somebody to love you. And so you need to now love you, appreciate you, accept you, and validate you. Validate means that accept yourself to be a good person, to be worthy. Is, is it easy to do this when you've experienced not once, twice, perhaps three times breakup? Yeah, recurring breakups tend to be more complex to deal with because then our resilience levels are tested. And we cannot be idealistic about it because if I go through one, two, three, it is easy to develop a default that says there's no more need to try. And so when I meet such a person, I am not going to be accusatory that how come it has happened to you three times? If I'm a friend, you don't ask this question. Mm you rather now solidarize with the individual and put yourself in their shoe by empathizing with them. If I were in such a situation, what do I do? I need people to be around me, to encourage me, to strengthen me, mm -hmm. to, to inspire me, to let me understand that people are unique. 
You see, you should always have at the back of your mind that individuals that you meet are not homogeneous. They are heterogeneous. So two males may be called kweku, kweku, or maybe kweku and kwaku. Okay. Now, the sound of the names appear to be similar, but they are two different individuals you're dealing with. One perhaps was raised by a single mother, the other was raised in a very comfortable um, first class setting. So clearly you're dealing with two diff different people. Mm -hmm. And it's important for anybody who's gone through recurring breakups to understand that still hold that value that people are different. And so it's always better to err on the side of caution also. Don't get to the point where you start off a new relationship from where you ended off the previous one. Okay. Usually people who go through a lot of these cyclical um, breakups, you will discover that as soon as they terminate one relationship, they don't take time to win themselves off the pain, the hurt, the shock, the disappointment. And then somebody comes along to try to commiserate with them. Then they fall into a state of becoming familiar with them. And it's easy. Mm -hmm especially for women. So I always tell the young men who try to help these kinds of ladies that don't provide them emotional support. Because see, whenever a man tries to give a woman who is not their spouse emotional support, they are vulnerable. Okay. It does not matter how clear in your mind you are. It does not matter how caring you want to be. The moment you get there to the level where your emotions begin to intersperse. Mm. It's easy for the person now to develop a certain love for you. Mm -hmm. And that can be volatile. So you notice that you are helping the lady, but you have a stable relationship, and there's a confusing signal mm. being sent to you. Then what do you do? Some have found themselves there. Yeah. Because it's easy. It is. Oh, it's, it's so yeah. easy. It's a slippery slope. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a slippery slope. It's like um, uh, being on a slopey surface, maybe polished surface with um, skating shoes with soapy water there, and you are not good at <laughs> using the skating shoe. I mean, that's basically the scenario you should look at. And you glide with gleeful shock. <laughs> that, Can I be here? <laughs> and many people, by the time... They do an evaluation of, how did I get here? Yeah. They never, ever thought it could happen to them. And so we should all understand that when it comes to our emotions, nobody is insulated. We only need to apply perpetual vigilance. Mm. How long does it take to get over someone? Um, reasonably, you need between six months to one year to win yourself mm. off a breakup situation. Oh, okay. Yeah, you need that between six months to one year to, to now do an introspection and then do a retrospection. So you look back to the good old days, the days, the times you had, and now you're not going to have it again going forward. How do you internalize this and put in processes that helps you to go through this new phase of life? Mm. Because... It's a reality. It's not an illusion. And so you, you better accept that reality and then say, this is my new state of being. How can I make the best out of this new situation? Mm. How do you deal with the fact that the other person has moved on? And that's, that's a very interesting one because sometimes you notice that the other person easily moved on mm -hmm. and you are now trying to look around to see how they're doing. So you're visiting their social media handles to see what's the latest uh, profile picture. Has he or she posted a new story of a new catch? And then it makes you worse because then you're looking at, oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. So you are, in your context, brooding over this. Okay, so what you need to do is to first and foremost accept the reality that you don't have it anymore. It, it, it is so key not to be in a state of illusion or deception that, oh, it will come back. Mm. 
sometimes we give ourselves those opportunities, but you don't go that route because it can hurt you in the, in the long run. And it also has the capacity to immobilize you from opening up to new and better prospects. You see? So there's a need for individuals who realize that the other party has moved on to also decide that I also need to move on. Mm. I cannot afford to camp here. Camping here will be inimical. It reminds me of those um, lepers who said, if we go into the city, we may be killed. If we stay here, we will die. What do we do? Let's take steps to get food. Because if we got the food, chances are that we may die or we may be annihilated. But they took a bold step to take a decision to, to move forward. And you need that grace and that strength to move forward. And so you need to also be careful who is around you, who is stoking the fires. Mm. You see, there are some individuals when they're around you, oh, and I saw him, mm. or I saw her. <laughs> and, and for them, their popular refrain is constantly feeding your brain with this thing that you want to <laughs> do away with. And you see the girl that he, he uh, initially said, it was nothing. Uh -huh. She's so the one that he begins he's, to eat he's you rolling up. with now. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the worst is when it's a close pal. He didn't only move on, but he moved on with a friend. That means now you are having to deal with a hydra-headed situation. One, how to now get over this situation of a breakup. And secondly, what next you have with this supposed pal. Mm. And you think for how long were they even doing it for? Exactly. Yeah. Since when have this been yeah. on your blind side? Was it just a sudden thrust of these relationships or it, it, it was always there except that you didn't know? You know, I have an image of a guy and a lady uh, sitting at, on a garden seat, and they were romanticizing. Then the lady's hand was behind <laughs> holding another guy. <laughs> <laughs> on the blind side of the gentleman, she was having this romantic yeah. flint with. Now, it does happen that sometimes the, the person who is closest to you is the one who is digging you deep. Otherwise, sometimes it's also the person he or she said was a relative. And you have always thought they were relational. Uh, oh, my auntie's previous marriage son. Hmm. Or an uncle's daughter. Oh, but oh, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Then all of a sudden, those tend to become the new lovebirds. Mm. Or someone you embraced as part of a tripartite relationship and didn't see them as a threat, then all of a sudden, they actually cause a revolt. Dethrone you as a queen mm. and take over <laughs> as a new Esther against Vashti. Now, when you have such scenarios, it's, it's really painful because then what it does is that it generates itself into greater mistrust in the larger community. So they then operate on this once bitten, twice shy philosophy. Mm. So now this person is now going to have a difficult trusting people, including people of her kind. I know people who say that I can't trust my husband with any woman. Mm. I, don't, I don't care who she is. I cannot. I'm traveling to the UK, and my husband is suggesting this lady friend of ours should come. And I say, no, and no, and it's been running battles. And the man runs such a busy schedule. What do you do? There are some who can have female helpers. Helpers, mm. domestic assistants or managers. Yeah. They can't because uh, some of them is as a result of a previous history or something mm. they may have witnessed or stories that may have scared them mm -hmm. growing up. So they make it a part of their worldview that I won't take chances. But the point is, you can't shield your man in this instance. You can't shield him from looking mm. or seeing other women. The truth of the matter is that anybody who walks around today, whether married or single, you'll be faced with a situation or one or more situations where somebody will be nice towards you. Mm. Now, the question would be, is the nicety that is being extended towards you at the professional level or at the personal level? Because it is when it gets personal that it gets 
potentially intimate because all the protocols then are deferred, are suspended. So then the person gets very much into your situation. They warm themselves into you. And warmth is such that it generates itself into a state of familiarity. And the familiarity, then you begin to take some things for granted. So passing comments become very personal, very intimate, and they incite in you a greater response. And so what do you do? You also want to respond. And that is accounting for a lot of the workspace infidelity which is happening today. Is there a point where you simply can't get over it? You know, you can't because you, you've invested so much yeah. and, and you really, no matter what anybody says, it can well, come to that, right? Yeah, some individuals have got into a situation where they just can't come to terms with the shock that there's a breakup. This person was such a good person. It's difficult to find somebody of his kind or her kind. I have given literally my life's savings to this individual. Mm. And the person has disappeared with this. Those are the ones who contemplate wrongdoing. What if you also contributed to the breakup? I well, mean, this I is mean, an absolute good person, yeah. but you, you caused it. Oh, yeah. And the person has moved on. And that is possible. I mean, we, whenever there is an issue, we should not focus on who is wrong, but what is wrong, what went wrong. Uh, as long as we do that, we will discover that we may have also contributed tacitly or, I mean, explicitly to the situation. Now, if your situation in terms of contribution is, say, 20%, 20% is big enough to destroy a relationship, to result in a breakup. Because when it comes to relationship, the small things are really the big things. Mm. Okay, so have you been overprotective of him? Have you been extremely harsh in your choice of words towards her? Uh, have you provided a sense of insecurity in this person? Have you clearly always given them the assurance that you are honest with feedback you give them? These are things that people process, and as they process them, they realize that, oh, I, should, I could have handled it better, you know, if I had gone this direction instead of the other one that I, I, I chose for myself. And those are the ones when they discover they contributed more to the breakup, then they begin to blame themselves. Mm. And all these self-accusatory comments, disparaging yourself, dismissing the possibility of a future prospect, and then closing up on you. Uh, it can be harsh. Mm. But I would still maintain and insist the best gift you can give to yourself in such a situation is loving you. You know, it is easy to want to love somebody mm. at the expense of loving you. What does loving you entail? Going out to have fun? You've got to understand that one, this is not the end of life. And that you may have contributed to the situation, yes. Admit your part. Secondly, the fact of you breaking up does not mean there's no future prospect. There's hope at the end of the tunnel. Okay? And, and then you, you, you get to a state where somebody will say, happy yourself small. <laughs> pamper yourself small. You see, if somebody is not going to pamper you, if somebody is not going to celebrate you, then celebrate you. You should get to that point where you tune up your mind, your heart, your being, your existence, and let those around you not talk you down. It doesn't mean just be this bravado, this uh, person who has this attitude of, I am invincible. No, that's not what it means. You understand that you have vulnerabilities. You understand that you've contributed to the situation, but you also know that there are prospects ahead of you. Mm. And you would rather pursue those prospects than relish in pain. So what, what do you do to those friends who are quickly updating you? I mean, you need, to, ex, you, need to creatively, <laughs> you need to creatively cut communications that supply those kinds of things. I mean, for instance, if you have a friend who is constantly tagging you with his latest updates or her latest... Um, Instagram post just to show that. After all, if you don't like, I'm here. <laughs> you know, somebody said uh, on one of her DPs, you thought that was the end of my life. 
As soon as I saw it, I knew there was an issue. <laughs> and normally when I see those things, I send you a private message. God, this was a group chat. And people were raising questions about, hey, your, your GP has changed. They won't mention directly what she has posted there. So I, on the back side, we were conversing. And I discovered she was going through a very difficult time. But she needed to put this brave face. Yeah. So you need to cut communication lines that supply those reminders. Mm -hmm. Some may even go and dig some old um, poses of yours with them. You say, and you remember this picture we took? And then you see this person is tagged in there, staring you in the face. And that can be dis disconcerting. Um, then the other thing also is that sometimes you need to sit with those individuals doing those things mm. and bring it to their attention that you are not amused at all at what they are doing. And sometimes because we don't talk about it, they assume we also like mm. it. Or maybe they posted one, two to you, you sent no comment about it, whether adverse or positive. And then they assume that, oh, maybe she likes it. So they keep supplying more. Mm. Uh, some would have to shut some individuals out of their Facebook, block some individuals. Uh, but if you give them the alert and they still persist, you have no choice but to shut them because that's a supply line that gives you a discomforting um, situation. Uh, sometimes we are overly sympathetic to such people. Oh, how? What about if they don't, they don't feel good about it? What if they are hurt about my protest? No, you should protest because you are in a discomforting situation. You want and to you cannot on. live in a state of pretense. Mm. The dawn is over. The morning has set in. Move on. It's a morning of life. Mm. Sunset comes and enjoy the sun. Go sunbathing. And happy you. But don't get into a state where pain drives you. You see, when pain drives an individual, it's dangerous. Can, can that pain also drive you to achieve? Oh, yes. I mean, that's, that's the positive side of those. I mean, and that's where you get a situation of a person now becoming worker, workaholic. They bury their head in work, 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 work. No relationship, no engagement with anybody. And then it sometimes also affects their human relations mm. with persons of the opposite gender or sex, whichever description you prefer to use. Some still want to stick with sex or gender <laughs> as a new normative. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you've got to be careful not to carry the pain to other people because they have done nothing. They have not contributed to your state. Just be careful that what you do not want others to do to you, you don't do to others. Mm. All right. Uh, let's uh, activate the phone lines uh, and, 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 and have you also share your thoughts with us on this conversation, how to deal uh, with a breakup. You can give us a call, 0302 2116902 We're talking about how to deal with a breakup so you don't go overboard. Uh, you don't even think or imagine taking your own life because you feel you are nothing without the person who has decided to move on. Uh, and Amos Kevin Annan is here. Uh, you can give us a call, 302 Join us uh, and let's all share together. Uh, how do you find somebody that you can talk to? Hmm. That's, that's a very difficult one because today a lot of people are proffering advice are not actually providing counseling. And so you must distinguish between one who gives you advice, who is an interested party. Mm. You see, some individuals have vested interest in the relationship, i.e. they are your friends. So clearly, there's going to be a joint deist intervention. So what you need is somebody who is a neutral arbiter, one who does not have any stake, as it were. Okay. Their only stake is your well-being. You need that. Now, you can find those within your faith communities. You can find some within your working environment. Clearly, there may be some individuals there mm. you are predisposed to. They may not be your friends, but they can, you can broach a subject such as this with okay. them. Okay. Let's speak to Dutz uh, in Y, and I hope that I got that right. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, my lovely. Yes, sir. You? I'm good. Is your name Dudes? Yeah, that's it. 
All right, that's very <laughs> unique. Let's hear you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my, it has been a big problem for almost a year and three months. Even though I've forgiven the person, but once, anytime I just meet the person, I, I, I become annoyed. I just don't want to see the person's face because of what she said to me. So I'm finding it difficult. Even though I've worked hard, it's issues in terms of money, but I, I don't just feel like going to any other relationship. Okay. Because of the issue, I find it difficult. I'm saying almost a year. It happened in February. That was 2016. Mm. But up to date, I've forgiven her. She came and said all manner of things. I've forgiven but I just don't really want to see her. Mm. And she calls. I, can't, I don't want to put your call. She even bought the mother all manner of things. But what she did, forgiveness, but still is in my, the pain is in my heart not to just have to see her again. Mm. Okay. All right, dudes. I don't want to uh, go into other relationships. You don't want to go into okay. All right, uh, yeah. dudes. In what? Thank you very much uh, for sharing. What? 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 I mean, mean, clearly, uh, he's still in the brooding stage where he's brooding over the situation, and pain is not yet out of his life, and that is what is driving him clearly. And he says it's not quite one year. Mm. He should give himself some time. I think it turned it. one in February then, because this is March. Oh, is this that happened what in said? February okay. 2016. Because I heard him say almost one year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, he still needs time. I mean, some may need more than one year yeah. to actually get over these things. And uh, it's not an event. Mm. It's a process. Okay. Once you see it as an event, then you think, oh, it's a touch and go situation. No, no, no. Do you no. tell the person to stop calling you? Because um, you haven't gotten over them. I mean, they, they will that, make you... That, that could be harsh, angrier? but it will be a good thing to do depending on the tone of the language. Okay. So, you know, if I call, hello, hi, I hope you're good. Yes, I'm fine. But I think that you could do yourself a lot of good. Let's give ourselves some space in this area as well. Okay. I'm still not quite myself. That's fine. But, hey, hey, why, why are you still calling me? Why are you still calling me? Please, 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 don't come and bother me. You, you said you are, you are over with me. Please be in your corner. Now one is a little too hard. Yeah. And that's the common strategy. Some that's why you're a life coach. I'll simply just block you. Okay, <laughs> let's talk to Sandra. Sandra is in Agogo. Hello, Sandra. Good morning. Hello, Mama Z. Good Hi. morning. Good morning. You Good sound morning, very Sandra. pleasant. I hope you're well. Very well, thank you. Cool. Let's hear you, Sandra. Yeah, I have a little contribution, you know, okay. um, about breaking up. Mm. You know, um, ladies rush sometimes into different relationships, immediately they break up. So what I have realized and what I have experienced is when you break up, you need to have time for yourself. You need to get over it for some time before maybe you decide to. If you rush into another relationship, maybe... Uh, one way or the other, it may not end up well. Mm. So uh, that's a little contribution I want to make. Okay. All right. It's more yeah. than little. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Adam is in Adidoma. Hello, Adam. Hello, Mama V. Alpha. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Like it before. I'm going to follow what happened. Let's hear you, Adam. Uh, Mama v, uh, thank you very much for the counselor and the life coach, what he has said. I've also been through the same thing before, and I'm, I'm finding it very difficult even to, even to, I'm meeting someone, but just to even tell the person that we should carry on in life, I'm finding it difficult, because I, I broke up with a lady, she broke up with me, but the cause is actually, the thing was caused by actually our pastor. Hello. Yes. Yes, I am. So, we're, we're listening. Yes. Yeah, so it has made me actually to go on. It has been one and a half years now, mm. and I have a very good friend. I'm, but I'm fine with God. I'm just. No, I'm not even wanting to go into any relationship. So I'm just alone, trying mm. to get over things. But, okay. but it was the lady actually that broke up with me, and okay. it's very so, painful. So mm. I don't know how that one will also be. Mm. So, All right, yeah. Adam. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for sharing. We'll try and see uh, the advice that will come. But let me quickly speak to Joe Manas in Tamale. Joe, good morning to you. Thanks for calling. 
Hello, Joe Manas. Yes, Mama. Yes, sir. Let's hear you. Hi. I am Hi. good, though. I am doing very well. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. Please go on. Yes, yes. In fact, Mama, <laughs> I, I may have this uh, breakup, but yeah, good morning. I may have this breakup. Um, Joe Manas, kindly turn on the volume on your television set so we oh, can I only said. hear you through the yeah. phone, okay? And then I uh, have this uh, breakup. Mm -hmm. mm. No, I'm 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 outside. I'm just back from. The, oh, the okay. Television. All right. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you. Let's go mm. on. I just have this breakup uh, with my wife. With your wife? Yes. Okay. And she took me. She went to another place, and she took me a lot of time for me to resolve things back. Uh, in fact, I've seen a lot of killing when she went to the other place. Uh, a lot of people coming in with a lot of uh, different things here and there. And I've learned a lot from that. And I really want to appreciate her repentance because she really did well. And she made a, a compromise. Mm -hmm. And there was a very serious uh, fight between me and her. So I said, I don't want that thing to happen again. Mm. Okay. So, Joe, if I understand you correctly, after the the breakup, you realize uh, what she meant and what she contributed to the relationship. Is that it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, you essentially want her back. Has he agreed to come back? Oh, yes, yes, yes. She has able to come back. I oh, she has it. agreed to come back. Yes, and that is good. Okay, good for you. I, I was just going to say, I'll, I'll give her my number so that any time you do something she doesn't like, she just <laughs> simply report. But good for you. Please take very good care of her. I think sometimes we don't know how much the other person means until they go away from us. They said a bird yeah. in hand is worth two in the forest. Yeah. Good two or more, you. actually. In the forest. Enjoy her, Joe Manas, and never let her go. Let's speak yeah. to Francis in Cape Coast. Hello, Francis. Hello, Mama. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Francis. Thanks for holding. Let's hear you. You are welcome. Uh, as the other guy earlier said, okay, uh, that uh, he was, that, that it was the lady who decided to go on. Mm. I have also once been a victim, okay, and because of that, I have now turned into a womanizer, which I think personally, I think it's okay for me. Because with the lady, I dedicated all my life. I raised her from, from zero to be a hero, and then she decided to move on without no reason. So sometimes it's very disgusting, and so for me, I think it's crazy, but what can I do? Mm. So you've also but, decided to just break people's hearts? You said? You've also just decided to just get into a relationship and move on, you know, just break people's hearts? Yes, of, of course. Wow. Francis, nobody deserves that kind of um, thing being visited upon them. I, I'll, uh, be, I'll, be happy, I, I'll be happy I, if we can have a conversation. I will also be happy. Okay. But honestly, speaking to you now, I have more than five girls. Okay, Francis, let's not go into the details yet. Okay. Let's let yeah, let's speak behind the scenes. Mm. Okay, I hear. Yes. Okay, our, but, our but, society will not be yeah. better with that. But Francis, let's get this clear. Are you ready to change? I mean, do you feel that you're doing something that is not right? Yeah, I, yes, you are right. I think what I'm doing is wrong. But for now, I think what I'm doing is making me happy. Okay. Yeah, All I right. mean, it's, it's, okay. it's a certain So just, just hold on. Don't hang up yet. Uh, my producers would give you a contact number so you can call uh, our live coach. Uh, after maybe 10. After, after, I was going to after say after 10. 11. Uh, after <laughs> okay. 10. All right, Francis. But don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, let's speak to Isaac. Isaac is in Laura. Hello, Isaac. And after Isaac, I would give you the opportunity to address yeah. some of the calls that have come through. Isaac. Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, Isaac. Let's hear you. Yes, I'm fine. The, uh, the other time, I was the one called and I thought of a breakup with a lady. And the child issue was the problem. Today, I just have a difference about a breakup. Okay. I've married again, then we stay differently. They adapt everything. But because of breakup, we use it as a tool, the little thing. That's why the former one left you. Mm. Every little thing. That is why I can also go and leave you. 
No, I, 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 I got lost a bit. So you're saying that if anything, if, if the, the, the least thing happens, you're threatening to leave. Is that it? Yeah, the least uh, problem I have with her is always like he used it because I break up with someone. Oh, mm. okay. So okay. he just okay. used it as a tool. Okay. Okay. Everything. Okay. It's just like a weapon to get you through me. Anything like that, whether this thing is annoying, you get the end, I can also leave you. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's wow. also a problem. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, certainly is. A very difficult one. Isaac, thank you for sharing. Okay. The person has moved on. You feel embittered by the situation. It is between the two of you. Other parties should not suffer what has happened to mm. you. Just as you are hurt as a result of someone moving on after you may have expended so much time, resources on them, would also not justify your hurting other people mm. or using other people to appease your pain mm. that that's not um, the way to go otherwise society will break down mm. uh, in a short while now he said the other gentleman said that Adam? his pastor yeah. was the one who caused the breakup sometimes mm. third party involvement helps sometimes to they have been the causes for breakups um, it's unfortunate i don't have the details of why don't he's concluding that the pastor caused this yeah and but such, now he such, can't even start another relationship. Yeah, and he's now caged in the past and because he's hurt. Now, until he gets over the hurt, there's no way he can be friendly and open to someone, giving them the opportunity to even become um, someone they can relate to in this context mm. uh, as we speak to. Now, it's important that we do not perpetuate our pain through inflicting further pain on other people. Mm. It, it is... Nobody deserves to be an outlet of your anger or fury. Mm. If we do that, we will give too many justifications for people who are doing the wrong things okay. out there. I'm happy he's willing to talk mm, that's Francis. backstage. H how about Isaac, who, who, because of his previous experience, it's almost as if you know what you did it's before is being used against you anytime you know there's there's an yeah, issue. Sometimes there are. Their comments, they themselves, their comments that they make contribute to the people using this as a constant uh, buffer. Oh, uh, because you broke up, you think you want to break up with me too. Okay, I know you are, you are used to breakups. I'm not used to breakups. So that can be uncomplimentary. So people who are in, in the situation where they do these should desist from it. Mm. Constantly reminding an individual you have a relationship with of their previous breakup. Because it is not a good incentive. If it comes in, it will threaten the relationship as mm. well. So there's a need for us to desist from this habit if it is persisting. Now, the individual himself must also not use breakup as a threat. Uh, for instance, in marital union, some people use divorce. I will divorce you. I will divorce you. Uh, and I last said something. The man had been threatened by the wife. If you keep doing this, I'm going to divorce you. <laughs> And it had gone on for a long time. So one day, the woman used the same threat. And the man said, you sit down. Do you know that I left you a long time ago? <laughs> I have left you a long time. But I'm still here. So now he found an antidote to the threat. Mm. But should he get to that point? Yeah. He shouldn't. So prenuptial relationships, um, breaking up, especially the difficult ones are when you break up and there's a child between you. And that means... There ought to be contacts. Yeah. Those ones are difficult to manage. Mm. And yeah. there you will need somebody else to mediate between you, to be the intermediary for mm. supplying or meeting the needs that are um, fiduciary or any, any kind of yeah. situation of that nature. Um, breakup is always not pleasant, but it does happen. When it happens to you, it's not the end of the life mm. that you have. Even yeah. when you go through a divorce process, it's still not the end of life. Yeah. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Don't develop a heart of vendetta and be driven by ill will. Mm. Allow goodwill to take over you and three things you need. Hold on to your faith. Mm. faith Keep hope. hope alive and learn love. to love you so that you can love others better. Thank you very much. But for those who want to talk to you beyond your time with us, what's the number to call?
um, the number to call. Sometimes when you give the numbers and people call and you tell them you're in a counseling session, they don't seem to understand. Yeah. Um, so I will still give it out. Uh, what you can do is to send a text message so mm -hmm. that later I can um, get back to you. It's 020 936 9361999 mm.